Hi, welcome back to Bioenergetics. My name is Devraj and today we're going to be doing number five in a series of bioenergetic workouts. And very exciting today. It's a 20 minute workout and it's going to be working on different parts of your body. So far with the workouts, we've been looking at the feet, uh, opening the chest, opening the face and uh, stuff like that. And now we're going to start to combine that a little bit. So this is a 20 minute workout. Uh, what's good to start with is to get your focus a bit because it's good not to approach bioenergetics in the same way as you'd approach, say, going to the gym or doing some yoga. It's not going to work quite so well. It's got a very specific way that you need to focus, and that is that you need to be really breathing and really feeling your body. Sometimes I'm doing sessions with people and they tell me, well, I've been doing the bow and arch for half an hour at a time and my back's still really tight. And when I check in a little bit more, you know, they're holding on, they're kind of doing it, holding on, trying to like, yeah, I've got to do my 20 minutes or whatever. But that is not the point. That is not the point. It's not going to do very much, basically. You need to breathe. You need to feel. Those are your focuses. Feeling the body and breathing, opening the body, consciously trying to really open the body. That is what it's about. Okay, I'm leaning down at a funny angle so that you can see my feet in a moment, by the way, in case you're wondering. And uh, let's get on with the workout. So today what you're going to do is to start by walking around the room. Make sure you're in bare feet, if you can be. And uh, also with some loose clothing on. And start to walk around the room in, on, uh, with your heels pulled upwards. I'm going to put on a little bit of music and a ding track. And then I'll see you again in a tick. So walking around the room, pulling your heels up, walking on your toes basically. A bit like a model. Maybe I need to adjust this. Yeah, so starting to walk around the room, ah, pulling your heels right up, walking on your toes. You can almost see me back here. You guys know how to walk on your toes anyway. And all the time, it's a bit like a little meditation, breathing and feeling. So you walk slowly. Kind of feeling each step. In fact, you can even feel each movement of your body. Breathing through the mouth is good, and having your mouth a little bit open is even is really really good. Stretching those heels up, and just staying aware of how it feels. How does it feel to walk around in this position? That doesn't mean making a narrative about it, a story about it. Not, you're not going to describe it to anybody. You just feel it. Feeling the body. And you may wonder, why do I put music on if I'm going to talk the whole way through? Well, it's nice to have a bit of background music. But also, you know, you do need to keep people moving. So if you're really kind of experienced and a bit bored of uh, listening to my voice, I apologise. But for some people, it will be necessary. So still walking around on your toes and really feeling your body as you do this, you know. Keep the stretch going. With these kind of basic stretches, this is very important. It's like you have your foot on the gas pedal inside of you. You're not trying to survive it. You're not trying to uh, avoid it in any way. You're actually engaging with the exercise on a deep bodily level. That is what it's about. That is what creates the release. That's what creates the change. This engagement, full engagement. It's not meditation in the sense of watching something, your thoughts or your feelings. It's engagement right in there. And you can still have a meditative kind of attitude, of course, but you're really engaging with the feeling. Heels still up, high as you can get them. See if you can get them another millimetre up. Stretch right up onto your toes. If in any of these exercises you get some violent twinges, feel nauseous, anything extreme, you need to stop and take it a bit easy. Uh, otherwise, a bit of burning or a bit of aching is good. Yes, a bit of burning and aching. That shows that something's happening. And basically, you're just altering the, the shape, the morphology of the muscles and as this happens, so holding starts to move. 
and any feelings of heat or burning is a clear sign that holding is moving, but even aching, you know, is basically good. So walking around still very slow, I mean, you can also stand still, it's fine. Don't walk too fast. Sometimes people walk with, with purpose because uh, I see it in the group room all the time because when we've got a purpose, then we don't have to feel so much, you know, it engages our mind with our purpose. So don't do that. Breathing through the mouth, trying to breathe down into your guts, down here in your belly. Breathing and feeling, stretching those heels right up. Ah. Breathing out through the mouth. There's a huge channel of expression which is open in pretty much every animal on the planet, certainly the mammals, and well and truly closed in pretty much hum every human on the planet. And it's from the belly up through here, out your mouth. So try and breathe deep while you do this exercise, reaching down towards your belly. It doesn't matter if you don't get there. You will have self-judgments, whatever. I had self-judgments upon self-judgment for years. You have to let that stuff go. Breathe deep and just keep practicing. With bioenergetics, like a lot of things in life, is you stick with it. Stick with it and you'll shift a hell of a lot. Sometimes people set themselves up for failure by trying it, you know, I'm going to really do it for like two hours a day. And then after three days, of course, they give up and beat themselves up, feel bad. You've got to set it up so that you're not, you're not setting yourself up for failure, basically. Simple as that. You're worth more than that. And with the ding, we let it go. Walk around a little bit normally for a few seconds, just really feeling your lower legs, your ankles, calves and tendons, feel it all. And now start to walk around on your heels. This is a little bit trickier for most people. Walking on your heels, just your heels, if you can. Certainly pull your toes up. So you're pulling your toes up, trying to walk on your heels, and you're breathing and feeling. What you'll notice when stress comes is most people, their, their learned behavior is either to space out, go into Fort World a bit, or just find some way of slackening the exercise off, you know, trying to convince themselves they're still kind of doing it. These, these practices aren't beneficial for you. Better to do it for less time, but do it fully. That means breathing, feeling, engaging with the feelings. Slowly your mind will not be quite so trippy about the feelings and you'll be able to learn to really stay in a place and feel. You know, it's, it's, it's a great practice, even for a lot of social situations in your life, to be able to really stay there, feel and be with it. So walking on your heels now, stay with it. You can do it, walking on your heels. If you need to put your hand on a chair or the wall or something to balance, help balance, that's fine. You know, it's really fine. So we're gonna be doing it for a few more minutes. I want you to keep the stretch going and keep engaging, keep breathing, keep feeling your body. Bioenergetics is an amazing practice, you know, if you, uh, People are always trying to do positive things with their mind, you know, but it's all right. But like, you know, if your body is not on board, you know, you just create a split between your mind and your body. You've got this super positive mind and this body riddled with holding and trauma, sitting there, miserable as sin. And at some point it'll start running some kind of death program because it's had enough. It's had enough of uh, this, this, this ego trying to be so good and perfect all the time. It's, it's fuck this shit, I'm gonna kill this bastard off. That is what happens. They'll track it, they'll track it eventually. That is exactly what happens. Disenfranchised parts of your body that are not getting nourished, get the hump. Group behavior. <laughs> so stay with it, stay with it. Pulling those toes up. You do bioenergetics all the day, the chances of you getting severely ill are, are vastly limited in my opinion, vastly, because you integrate your body and your mind, and this is the core, you know. 
Everyone is trying to fix things with their mind. It's a big waste of time and most of the time it makes things worse because your mind starts to actually detach from your body, not physically, but uh, metaphorically. And then the mind is going off in one direction and the body's kind of sitting there like a thing, like just thinking, oh God, what's this? In analogy, the human body is like a vast sewage pipe blocked up with crap. Not a very pleasant image, but an accurate one in my opinion. All the time that we spend trying to be a certain kind of person, all the stuff that doesn't fit in, we shove it back in the body. And that's why the body gets so inflexible, so rigid. You know, we think it's just age. It's not age. I'm 56. It's, there's, there's no need to get rigid as you get old. No need at all. So walking on our heels, <laughs> pulling those toes up. Maybe it's starting to ache a bit now. Let yourself really feel it. Keep them pulled up a little bit more. See if you can get another, another millimeter. Get those toes up another millimeter. Feel the stretch in your shins, maybe your Achilles tendons, your calves, maybe your lower back, whatever it is for you. Breathe and feel, feel your body. That feeling is healing. Might not feel like it. <laughs> Breathe and feel. Breathing out through the mouth. Pulling your toes up. Ah, and it's for Bell, so you can just let it go. Walk around a little bit normal. Still feeling your body. Ah, see if it feels any different walking around now. Okay, next exercise. We're going to combine two exercises now. So once again, on your, you come up on your toes and then you start to roll your shoulders. So you come forwards, round and back like this. Follow my movement. And you stay with these two movements. We're going to do this for five minutes. Shouldn't tell, that, tell you that, the mind will start to freak out a bit. But, uh, uh, you just breathe and you just feel into it. Starting to really roll those shoulders. Rolling the shoulders in this way opens a very key area of your body if you're interested in emotions or emotional holding. And that's the area between your shoulder blades. This is where we shut down, where we close our heart, where we disengage from what's happening in our life. And when you see people who do a lot, who are always moving or on the computer, when you, when you do that stuff, you lock tight the area between your shoulder blades and that stops you from feeling what's really happening. Because we're a bit scared to feel, but it is healthy to feel. So walking on your toes or standing on your toes up high and rolling the shoulder blades at the same time. You can do it. If it's really a lot, take it at your own pace. And if it's not a lot, then really open those shoulder blades wide. You know, engage. I often see people when I'm leading this exercise, they kind of half do it. You know, they do it in a, in a kind of not really doing it way. It's not going to give you so much. You need to get in there and engage right in there, right in there, right into your body. It's not so much the British way. It's a bit more the American way to get in there and engage. So you have to be a bit more American when you're doing this exercise if you're from a more withdrawn kind of cultural background. Ugh, really get in there, get engaged with the feeling that's coming up in your legs, in your shoulders, your shoulder blades. Get in there and feel it as you move. Ugh. And breathe out through the mouth, breathe out deep. Ah, these deep out breaths keep you engaged. It's very important. Ah, ah. 
you know, feel into your body. Maybe your arms want to move really fast, you know. You know, you try and try and let them take over it. You see parts of your body have their own intelligence. And when they have a chance to break a bit free from the mind mental control, they want to really go for it. The pelvis is another area that will do this a lot. But you know, even if you're rotating now and you feel like, wow, my arms really want to freak out and rotate, let them do it. Ah. Ah. Just keep breathing and keep feeling your body. You're doing great. Stay with it. Breathing and feeling. Ah. Up on your toes, heels right high, way off the ground, high as you can get them. Check in, have you got them high? Heels right off the ground, shoulders rotating in this direction. Ah. Breathe out. If you can feel parts of your body getting tense, try to breathe out from me. I can feel like a point uh, quite low down in my neck. It's getting pretty tense, you know, as I'm talking. Ah. Ah. Just try and feel into wherever it is and breathe out from there. Opening your body. <coughs> if you're just surviving it, waiting for that ding to come, try to drop that and just feel the feeling underneath. Underneath all the survival narratives and all the disengagement narratives, finally there's a lot of feelings. Either bodily sensations or emotions. Ah, it's the ding! What a shame. So for a moment, let the movement go. Walk around, give your body a little shake, whatever you need. And then now what we're going to do is walk on the heels and rotate the arms the other way. So my arms are going to go, let's get a bit closer, go back, up and around like this. Back, up and around. The other way of rotation. And now I'm walking on my heels at the same time. You'll have to take my word for it. Oh, I might be able to just about see my ankles if I go right back. Yeah, I can probably see it there. Walking on my heels, rotating the arms. Ha! Ah, and breathing. Coming out of this survival thing, this when will it end thing. Bring yourself right in the moment. Breathe hard, breathe deep. You can do it, yes. Ha! Ah. Oh. Oh. oh, yeah, really getting that rotation wide, wide as you can bear, wide as you can do it. Keep that engagement going. That's the tricky bit for the mind, you know, this constant engagement. It's what creates the change, it starts to liberate your energy. But it's so easy, you know, I'm the same, you know space out for a couple of seconds or drop the move for a little bit. You have to try and stay engaged. <sighs> Breathing and feeling. Ah. Ah, feel the ache if it's an ache. Get right in there and feel it, engage with it. Ah. So much held in our back. You know, if you want to get stuff done or you want to really change the world, whatever it is, you want to take a positive position for your life, you know, you need to clear up your stuff and get your energy moving. And the great thing about bioenergetics is it starts to take out all the old holding. You know, people go to the gym, do some interval training, do some yoga, they're all great. I do those things myself, but they don't have the specific focus of removing holding. You know, you do some interval training and you feel like, wow, I'm so pumped up, I'm ready to really go for it now, you know, endorphin rush. But what this stuff does, you know, and of course it's useful, you can get your core really functioning properly. 
yoga, you can get some flexibility, build your muscle strength. But bioenergetics takes out all the old holding. For all the years you've been alive, having an active ego, repressing your shit, blocks the natural flow of energy in your body. Blocks you. So it's like a machine a little bit, you know, when you want to really do something that's really important for you, you need to put all your energy behind it. And the more energy you have available to you, the more you can really do it. Get out there and really make a stand for yourself, whatever you're doing. And if you do these practices every morning, progressively you will get more and more energy liberated. Because that's the intention of bioenergetics. So stay with it, you know, walking on the heels, feeling that ache, getting those shoulders rolling. Whew. You can do it. Oh. Breathing and feeling. Oh. Stay with it, stay with it. Oh. Walking on your heels, rotating the arms, getting those shoulders rotating wide, feeling how it feels. Ah, oh, yeah. Stay with it, stay with it, don't slacken off. Stay present, aware, engaged with your body, engaged with the feelings. Don't give too, energy, too much energy to any I can't do it stories, all the old stuff. Let them be there, you don't need to push them out, but don't give them too much attention. We've all got that, tons of that stuff rolling around in our heads, nothing different about you. Ah, and then let it go, let it go. Ah. And we're just gonna close this session with a few little, kind of like ax chops. So you stand with your feet about shoulder width apart, maybe a little wider, and your knees a bit bent. And you just bring your arms up, like two fists, side by side, and stretch back each time, a little stretch back, and come down like, ha, 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 ha. Like you're throwing something out through your arms from the center of your, neck and your upper back. Make a bit of sound at least, as long as it's not winding up your family or partner or something. Another few seconds. And let it go, let it go. And now you can just stand, feel your body or have a little sit down, whatever you want, glass of water. Well done, you did it. You did bioenergetic workout number five. Hope you're feeling good now. Okay, see you next week.